Go with the theme song. Gather round and let me tell you the story of Lost Drunk Tank. Well, it all started with a why are we here and it quickly spread on from there. About an hour of your time that will not return, but you don't mind. In fact, you want more. It's just the RT staff with an excuse for work, but I don't mind because it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Solo. What's the drunk Hey. I'm gonna hire that guy to make my theme song. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, the Jeff theme song. Would I have a bitchin' called out solo in the middle of it? Like that? <laughs> solo. Solo. That was great. That was really good. Welcome to the Drunk Tank. Today is Wednesday, December the sixteenth. Yes, it is. At which point, when you say the date, you have to say, "Man, this year has gone by so fast." How did it happen? How did that happen? I was sure the year has gone by so slow. It's been dragging. Has it been dragging for you? Not at all. This has been this has been a very uh, uh, like it's easy to plot this year in my sort of playbook. Like it started out really really shitty and got really good towards the end. Like that's that's my life for the year. We'd like to welcome our special guest Jack Patillo. Am I still a special guest? Not so special. I, yeah, I think I'm just a guest at this point. Are you? Yeah. He's like the third man now, or fourth man, I guess. <laughs> out of five. Out of five. <laughs> Well, typically it's me What's up, and guys? Gus, but Gus isn't here today because well, uh, Gus is not here today because he will be traveling later this week, and so he took a day off today to prepare to travel. <laughs> That's all. We're, we're not going to say anything. Come further on, let's about get into that. it. <laughs> the the best part about that was the uh, when we figured out that today we had to do a podcast, and the guy that runs the podcast didn't leave instructions or anybody in charge or nope anything. Just showed up and we're like. Is, isn't Tuesday is it podcast day? <laughs> it's podcast day. So, uh, Bernie, you took the, the bull by the horns and, and took charge. I guess I did. And Man, Joel Heyman congratulations. is not, Joel Heyman is not with us either because Joel is also traveling. So Joel had to go to the salon <laughs> to get his haircut. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a very pretty primed it's perm, perm day for Joel. What do you think it's like to be with Gus and Joel on a plane together? Very quietly uncomfortable. Quiet, quiet's quite the key word, right? Yeah, for sure. Maybe five or six words said the entire time. Joel, I bet Joel and Gus communicate in the way that a married couple that's been together for forty years communicates. <laughs> I think they, well, like, I don't, these I, peas, see, peas are delicious tonight. I, <laughs> yes, they are. I was on the plane back from uh, uh, Chicago with those guys. Well, they were in first class, and I was back in coach with the uh, the refuse and everybody. And um, by the that, way, that's a whole different issue. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> no, we'll we'll, we'll talk get that, that next week. some other time. Okay, yeah. okay, but uh, I think they just drank the whole time. Who do you think pays for the? Fr- oh, never. Mind. <laughs> I wonder who does. I'm curious. Yeah. So, so what was it like to to, to fly with Joel and Gus? Well, they were up front, and I was back in the in the back by myself. So I don't know. I'm assuming like there was no uh, no stewardesses going crazy and asking you know screaming about orange juice or anything like that, but. Do you not know what I'm talking about? No. What are you talking about? Oh, so some American Airlines uh, flight attendants apparently went bonkers on some guy in first class uh, recently, and it was on Consumerist. And uh, and anyway, so this 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 flight attendant, she went and talked to the captain because she just had a rough day or something, and then she took it out on this guy. She then went to the captain and got him to sign a form saying, uh, you are threatening one of my flight attendants and uh, actions may be taken. And meanwhile, everyone in first class with the guy spoke on his behalf, and then it's a huge debacle. And now Delta has come out and said, anyone who was on that flight, we will automatically give you gold status on our airline just to get you away from American. Wow. Yeah. What? Seriously, Delta stepped into the mix and said, we'll give you gold status on our airline, I assume for a year? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. It's on Consumerist, though. The whole story is up there. Like the the response was like Delta read that story on Consumerist and then emailed them and said, "Hey, if any of those people who contacted you about this flight get a hold of us, we'll take care of them." I, I was on that flight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how would they know? It was from Sacramento to Dallas. See that that would be the ultimate kick in the ass, right? Is that Delta says, "Okay, we'll give anyone who's on this flight gold status." Ten thousand people say, "I was on the flight," <laughs> and then Delta goes. Hey, American, can we get the manifest? For that? <laughs> <laughs> and American goes, no, what? Fuck you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Give them all gold. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I was on it. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, you Why gotta, not? There's got to be some way you have to prove it or something like that. Like, show, show some sort of record. I, I would on, assume. I was on the flight. 
Maybe we can cause a big enough stink about this. United will give us platinum. <laughs> yeah, here's a better question. Prove I wasn't on the flight. That is- That's true. Oh, oh, so oh no. It's Bernie. Oh, no. Left it's my wife. On. Should I talk to my wife? Yeah, tell yeah. what's up. Pro speaker. Here we go. Hey, Bernie. Hey, what's up? Uh, we're doing the podcast hey, right now. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm at the store, and they have those Halo toys that you're looking at. Was it McFairlane or something? Is that the brand? <laughs> McFarlane, yeah, that's the car. It. Would he want a brute bodyguard? A brute, yeah, he'd like a brute bodyguard, I'm sure. What about a flood pureform stalker? <laughs> what does it look like? I don't know what that one is. A flood pureform stalker? What does it look like? Um, it looks like a tree branch that's like bleeding. <laughs> looks like a tree branch is bleeding. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds right. He'd like that. Read the back of the package. What does it say on the back of the package? <laughs> does it have like a description of it? Okay. What else is there? Um, Eva. Eva. Is that from is Wally? Wally? EVA. EVA. No. Oh, 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 oh. EVA is. And what does that one look like? It looks like a girl. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, I'd say that one's good too. What about a Grinch? A Grinch? A Grunt. Oh, yeah, Grunt. What does that one look like? Um. Uh, it looks like. Little monster guy with big feet. Okay. And he's wearing a gas mask. Okay. Yeah, that's and good. He's got, he, he's got like a pointy. He looks, it looks like he's wearing a sailboat on his back. <laughs> yeah, I think all the, I think all those are great. I think he'd are like. You it. At me? No, 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 no. No, they're J- Jeff and Jack are doing a video in the background. Okay. So I should get all those. Yeah, those all sound good. These are the ones you were looking at, though, right? Like, the same kind? Yeah. All right. I'll get them, and then if you don't like them, we'll just take them back. Okay. I'm sure he'll love them. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope your son doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> hope your wife doesn't <laughs> no, listen to the podcast. My, why would I let my son listen to the podcast? That was my <laughs> wife shopping for Halo figures for my son, because JD has, my kid, has discovered that if he goes on eBay and can look up Lego, he can find guys that have made custom lego sets with their own photocopied instructions and for say a warthog or a scarab tank it's like eight hundred dollars you know and and he doesn't have any concept of how much stuff costs so he puts he put on his list of what he wants from santa he put just a list of things that are ridiculously expensive like one of a kind items can i add to that list yeah i know there's some stuff on he had like scarab tank custom made you know (laughs) Uh, cl- Clone Wars troop transport custom made. Dude, you and I live in very different worlds. Fabergé egg. I think that's <laughs> so. Flight on Spaceship One. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like the you know Mickey Mantle rookie card, that kind of thing. And those, those Lego things are uh, pretty popular, actually. Like, those guys who do like the custom Lego stuff. Actually, I, I did that Batman logo, and I ended up giving it to you, right? Yeah, that was really cool. I have a Batman logo sitting at home that's uh, made by Jack. Yeah. You have a video of you doing that in time lapse. Yeah, right? I've got a time lapse video. Actually, the the whole idea was I made it. Uh, I was working for a, a video game publisher, and we heard the Lego Batman license may be up for grabs. So we we pitched Traveler's Tales, right? Those guys make the Lego games. We pitched them on uh, publishing the Lego Batman game. So my boss at the time asked me to make. Uh, he said, "Make something cool out of Legos." And being a huge geek that I am, I love Legos, and so I I found. A custom program online where you can actually like it's like a CAD program for mm-hmm. Legos, and you can actually design out uh, like a whole like whatever you want, and then it'll tell you exactly what pieces you need to create what you just made in this program. And there are websites you can go to where people will sell you individual pieces of Legos. And so I bought enough to make the, the thing, and then made it for work. It was pretty awesome. And so- you should you should never ever show that to my kid <laughs> he would just make stuff all day we well, could be like an engineer or something that could help out yeah you know he he says he when he grows up he wants to be a lego set designer himself so you guys so, went to lego world right out in california yeah that was pretty cool we went out there before comic-con and uh the best part of that was the shop where they showed the guys working building everything that was going to be in lego land that's, that's pretty cool. awesome yeah like they built like a miniature las vegas strip which i thought was pretty cool that uh-huh. is pretty cool yeah and, uh, speaking of the Las Vegas Strip, it it wasn't held there, but the overall tone reminds me of it. Did anybody see the VGAs, the Spike Video Game Awards? No, I just nope. read about it. 
By the way, I, it's one of those things where the acronym is wrong. It's, you want to call it the VGA Awards, but... But it's VGA. It's just the VGA. Yeah. Hit the ATM machine and then go see the VGA Awards. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so it saw that uh, Uncharted 2 got Game of the Year. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. I, it, it definitely... It, in a nutshell to me, the VGAs feel like a marketing slut fest. I don't know if I'm using that <laughs> term correctly, but it is nonstop... Promotion, and that's why I'm not surprised that a game that came out in the last month got Game of the Year. Well, it, it seems very, very in the moment. Sure. Well, for me, the VGA is like they they try to push the whole idea of video games as this. You know, it's it's a new, it's a mature thing now. Video games are turning, and then I think two years ago, the VGAs, which is the premier award show for video games, the winners were painted on naked women. Like the like the names of the games were painted on naked women, and that was like their ballot that they opened up and announced the winner. And it's like <laughs> they opened a naked. Woman. <laughs> well, where do you go from there? But it's like really like how does this how does this help out video gaming culture in general? Did like they uh, did they spell the winners out with cocks? <laughs> yeah, wasn't that the one where what was the one where Gamecock came up and that was that, that, one. One. that was that and one, interrupted yeah. those motherfuckers those fucking. But I mean, like the really okay to me, sort of nerdy the per- Kanye West. They, they came up, yeah. They came up and interrupted the Bioshock. Was Ken Levine? Yeah, Ken Levine. Yeah, Ken Levine accepting for Game of the Year for Bioshock. Which, granted, I would have interrupted and said, "What? <laughs> why, why was Bioshock? Bioshock is what? Prob- did it, what did it beat that year? GTA Four? Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, GTA Four was this year. No, no. Uh, GTA Four was it? Yeah, it was well over a year ago. It didn't come out the same it, year as Bioshock. I think it beat that. And I Bioshock think, came out in two thousand seven. Did it beat Halo Three as well? Yeah, it beat Halo Three and Mass Effect. It didn't. It didn't. It, yeah, I remember. G- wait, who cares? GTA Four is two thousand eight. Yeah. Okay. Bioshock two thousand seven. Dude, how, what? How about that Reach trailer? It's pretty cool. I thought it was awesome. Did anyone else pick up on the uh, Welcome to the Group number six or something like that? There was a couple things in that Reach trailer. There, there was a hint of six player. I'm assuming co op. And if that's true, I am very, very happy. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Do you think you can get together six people to play co-op on a regular basis? No. On a regular basis. It is Halo, though. It is it Halo. It is Halo. But on... you also have to deal with the five people you're going to get together are fucking retarded, probably. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I figure if if we want to do a sit-down and do a run-through of the entire game, that first, like, I would say month of the game being out, you could pull it together pretty easily. Like, But like at this point, like, how difficult is it to get a Left 4 Dead group to play through the game? Right now? Yeah. Left 4 Dead 2? Left 4 Dead 2. <clears throat> well, I can tell you that no. somebody in this room was too busy Saturday to play Left 4 Dead on Expert because he was watching Gossip Girl. <laughs> that was that was the excuse that came back at me over AIM. Sorry. It wasn't even him. He couldn't even admit it himself. Jeff's wife comes back to me and says, sorry, Jeff can't play Left 4 Dead with you. He's too busy watching Gossip Girl. Dude, it's a great show, You're though. You're a fucking idiot. I just Ugh. got into it. It's I'm on episode uh, that's, nine. That's fantastic. Blake Lively, right? Yeah, and it, it, Mason and all those hot-ass ladies. I will tell you this, though. You made the right decision. Yeah, I, you guys played for four hours and couldn't beat uh, Dark Carnival on Expert. We could Expert, not beat right? Dark Carnival on Expert. Where, do you, where, do you, where does the, bl- the blame lay? Um, so who, who was playing, by the way? Pretty much with everybody who's not it, in Japan. It was Bernie, honestly. Andrew, <laughs> Finch, and Joel, right? We have this guy that we play games with whenever we want to win, and his name is Andrew Panton. And we, you've probably heard about his name mentioned yeah. in Jeff and Jack's Achievement Hunter videos. Yeah. Uh, he's from Canada, and he's a ringer. I mean, we put him in anything, and we can win. He was yeah. on my Griff Ball team. We made it to the championship yep. every time he was on my Griff Ball team. Never won, but you know, at least we got there. And we played with him on Left 4 Dead 2. We were on that finale for, I think, an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And and Andrew was wiping. And we just gave it up. Damn, yeah, that sucks. Jesus. You know, t- you Left 4 Dead 2 is fucking hard, though. Well, okay. the, the real problem is you pull tanks now on Expert, which mm-hmm. is hard enough. But now the horde just never stops on the finale. So yeah. imagine fighting a horde and a tank. It's just not, it can't be done. Yeah. you know, I mean, it can be done. People have gotten it. But I've also heard tales of glitches and yeah having having the achievement of beating all the left for dead one campaigns on expert that's one of my prouder achievements blood harvest on expert was fucking brutal yeah but then you could do the melee thing in the closet until they fixed it yeah i didn't do that though oh, all that shit was fixed by the time i got ready to play remember i started left for dead months after <laughs> you, you did. guys did there is a problem with like if you update your game that you're losing a lot of the ability to get stuff that other yeah. people have been able to exploit yeah. for months and months hey but speaking of left for dead the DLC announcement yesterday was pretty crazy. That what do you neat. think about that? I think it's awesome. All right, well, talk about it. All right, so it was announced yesterday that the first DLC for Left 4 Dead 2 will be coming out sometime early next year, which is going to be very crowded DLC space next year, next spring. 
uh, and uh, that it will re it will not reunite it will reunite the Left for Dead one characters with the Left for Dead two characters in some interesting playable way. So and it'll it, take place after like I don't know like somewhere I, I'm not sure where it takes place in the storyline. But so will it be left eight dead? Left hey. eight. <laughs> Maybe you'll get it to your eight. You'll get your eight player co op, Jack. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. That's a good question though. And I think if they said there'd be new multiplayer modes too. That's cool. So the new, new the new multiplayer mode that they have in Left 4 Dead 2 Scavenge is awesome. Because you have to well, play it's, it. It's way better than survival. How would you? Let me ask you a question. Okay. Just an idea for an MMO game. Okay. How would you like an MMO game that's totally player versus the environment, but it's a zombie apocalypse? And you're in a compound, and you just have to work with a group of other people to maintain the compound for in real time. Like, it's constantly being attacked, and you have to get resources and, and leave every now and then to go get stuff and then just return to the compound. I love it. I think it would be awesome. How big would that MMO be? Like, how many people could you have in that, theoretically? Well, you'd, have, you'd have a series of compounds around the world, right? And you would, like, spawn in a compound with, like, seven other people, maybe? Yeah, and I guess and, you could do player versus player at some point and you where could, you attack each other's compounds. Well, you could even... You could do that, or you know, as you as you start to whittle down and you guys die, and then they have to roll new characters in different compounds. Maybe then you would you would try you could get to a different compound and try to join forces with other people, but you'd have the the hazards of trying to get from point A to point B through the zombie world. It would be it, it could be awesome. Where's Gus when you need him? You know, yeah. I, it's funny because I said MMO, but the only reason I said MMO is not for the massively multiplayer part of it, but more for the persistent world part of it yeah and it's interesting that there's no persistent world small games like why can't you have a six player persistent world game yeah and you just go as long as you can and people can leave for 12 hours at a time and drop back in and it'll be awesome know, check on things i guess can you do that with like some of those farm what's that thing on facebook everybody plays i don't know anything about i don't know don't farmville know. is that what it's called <laughs> I don't sure know. you know it's 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 i, I know what you're talking about Sivoni or one of those no no things? no no no. it's it's on facebook i think it's up it's called farmville more people play that game than use twitter that's really? a, a stat that Jeez. facebook put out well it's there's there's a ton of those free mmos that tons and tons of people play like mobinagi and all of those that have like have more users than wow you know Oh, yeah, I read about some free MMO that makes two hundred and eighty grand a month, and wow. they're they're approaching profitability. Wow, for being a free MMO. And then we knew a guy who helped us in the early days of Red versus Blue. He went off to go make one of those mafia games where you you know gather resources, you know, and then you you can buy you can spend money in real world dollars to get things in the game and build up your army and your mob, and was then this, everything was... wipes every like six months. Was that Sandman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was going off to work on that, and at the time I was like, yeah, I'm just not. I don't think it's big a real, business. I don't think it's a real kind of game, but yeah, sure enough, five years later, it's a huge business. All those microtransaction games, yeah, they do really well. Yep, and I think that's what I think but, that's what Farmville. But for is. like every one of those that succeed, there's a hundred that never did, right? Probably. Sure, well, that, you can say that about anything. Yeah. That's true. I yeah, I mean, why well, well, got well, to be like that? Be, before we get too far away from it, uh, speaking of MMOs, WoW just released a new update. I don't know if anyone cares about this now since Gus isn't here, but I guess I'll step into the WoW role. Go ahead. Um, there's actually a new quest helper like guide. So if you have your quest log, you pop it up and you're in like it, it'll show you the map and sort of the area you need to be in. So like there've always been add-ons and stuff that kind of show you where stuff's located, right? But now it's part of the game. It's actually like it's really neat how they do it too. Like it won't tell you specifically where stuff is, but it'll be like in this general area and it'll literally ha it'll give you like a little circle on the map like it's in here. Find it. And it kind of helps out, you know. I guess so, yeah. Sure. I mean I, I suppose in the early days they they hoped that you would do that stuff in game where you would talk to other people and find out. Yeah. And then people just made databases like what's it called? Lightheaded. No. That's what I use. That's an add on, but yeah, like uh Wow Wiki. Like Wowhead and Wow Wiki and yeah. like all yeah, Alakazam. They, they probably have stuff. changed over time yeah. since I used them, but there was like a Wow PD or something like that and you just look up whatever you wanted to and Wowhead. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's one of them. Is it? Yeah. But before we get even further away from it, the VGA. So the VGAs they were an endless commercial for video games. Well, that's all they are to me. It's like we now have three points in the year where game companies release trailers. We have E3, PAX, and the VGAs. Yeah. They announced two big games yesterday that I had no idea were even coming out. It's more, mean, more than two. It's quite a few. I mean, two, that were on, two that I care about. Okay. That he didn't know that existed. That I didn't know were coming. Okay. You know? like I had it hadn't crossed my mind that they would even come close to announcing a Batman sequel. Or I mean, you had to assume it would happen at some point, but I didn't know it was gonna. They were gonna announce it for next year's release. Well, what they announced? They announced Batman: Arkham Asylum two, yeah, Force Unleashed two, yep, Reach. The Reach is already announced. Oh, you're saying just out of the clear blue sky? Yeah, out of the clear blue sky. Yeah, um, True Crime three. 
Yeah, that game's. I don't. I don't really know much about the true crime series, but yeah. All I know is the second one had Christopher Walken in it. That's right? like a show on A and E. True crime. <laughs> true yeah, crime does. three. Starring Steven Seagal. <laughs> Have you uh, watched that? No. <laughs> well, I've seen. I've seen clips of it on the soup, which is all I need. Looks awesome. Yeah. Have you been watching Derek? Uh, Derek Comedy. Have you been watching Community? No. That show is getting better and better every single episode. It seemed pretty funny when I the first few episodes that I watched. I just, you know. But I, it, it's funny. I sat there. I watched it with my my dad actually, and. uh I'm laughing at everything that's coming on the screen, and he kind of gets every fifth joke. It's very, very fast-paced but and very pop culture referenced. So, I don't, I don't know. I dug the shit out of it, though. The See, shit out of it, really? I did. I dug in. They, do they ever talk into the camera on that show? No. Okay, good. It's not like a pseudo-reality show kind of it's, office kind of thing? No, no. It's, it's, a, it's a serialized comedy. Okay. One, one camera comedy. All right, well, here's this, this kind of comes together with something else I want to try to do. Okay. Since we're now talking about TV shows. We never have awards, so I figured let's have some awards. So give me some nominations. We'll take some nominations this week. Four. Get some nominations from the community as well and the Drunk Tank group. And then next week we'll come back with who we think should win. So okay. TV show. Best TV shows of 2009. 30 Rock. Uh, community. I'm going to put V on there. Um, the Office is Mad- always on there. Mad Men. I don't know. never seen it. Gossip Girl. A- any Fuck that. Get out of here, Dude, Gossip Girl. if you get girl. to put Mad Men down, I can put Gossip Girl down. That so, is not even close to the same show. thing. How do you know? How dare you even You've say that? You've never seen Gossip Girl? I've never seen Mad Men. I've heard so the title. they're incomparable. They're incomparable is right. They're definitely <laughs> incomparable. Uh, all right, wait, wait. 30 Rock, I said V. The uh, Office. Office. South Park. Come on, you put The Office on there? I mean, it's... Yeah. Office it's a great season. It's a really good great se- season. The, the company's well. I, have you? I, they did a fucking dance number in the wedding. Come on. Well, yeah, but did you see what? Did you see the whole idea behind the dance number? Like why they did it? Yeah, let's fill an hour. That's the idea behind it. <laughs> that was a great episode. Though, it was a good episode. It was real sweet. You know, a girl from uh, Dark Comedy is on uh, The Office now. Oh, is that Erin, the new receptionist? Yeah, oh, she's cute. She's in uh, she's in Mystery Team briefly too. Oh, so, and Bobby Moynihan. Uh, uh, so you put South Park on there. I will put South Park on there. They've had a great season. No Simpsons. No Family mm-hmm. Guy. Futurama. You and your fucking Futurama. Futurama's not on the is, air. Is it coming back? It or? is coming back. <laughs> okay. All right, I got Thirty Rock V. Office, South Park, Mad Men, any of you got gossip? Well, I mean, if we're talking for the year, we could say Lost. Yeah, Lost. Yeah, yeah. you could say Lost. I mean, it's it's again, it's like the video game thing. It's like anything that's come out in the last two months is a lot easier to keep track of. All right, and then uh, what about uh, what about Dexter? Any of you guys watch Dexter? No. I, the finale no. just happened apparently, and everyone's going batshit over it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put Dexter in there <laughs> because. <laughs> There are people who watch it. Everything I read about that finale is just... I haven't read anything about it. I, I, I haven't seen the show once. All it's right. A, I saw the first season. It was good. Was it? Yeah. All right. So think about TV shows some more. If you have any ideas for TV shows for, that should be nominated for the Drunk Tank TV show of the year, you can go to rooshies.com slash drunk tank and submit a nomination. Now, Will why you? don't... I, <laughs> what's that? I hope you can. <laughs> Who's going to run that? No, you just put it in the forum. Oh. Yeah. That's the internet, baby. Okay, I guess. Yeah, the, group, the group's have forums. That's right. Okay. Shit, shit handles it on its, by itself. All right, so should we go to video games since we're talking about the VGAs? Let's do video games uh, and DLC. Video games? Well, I think that's two that categories? Kind of, uh, Three categories. We do arcade, retail, Jesus and DLC. Christ. Wow. Okay, video games. Best video games of the year. Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, yeah. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2. I'll put ODST on there. Uh, Modern Warfare 2. Let's take that off. Brutal Legend. Brutal Legend. Legend. Um, what's on my desk right now? <laughs> what, yeah, a, what uh, have I been playing? I wouldn't put the saboteur on there. DJ Hero probably would not go on there. DJ Hero's a great game. It's a great uh, game, but not game of the year. What came out earlier in the year? There's a lot. Of, oh, Batman! I didn't play. Yeah, it, Batman. Uh, uh, shit, I can't think of it. Assassin's Creed Two, ODST, Brutal Legend, Batman. I guess you got to throw Uncharted Two up there. Yeah, Uncharted like Two, so absolutely. Much. I just haven't played it. See, Little Big Planet. Maybe that's no, not that's, that's not this year. 2009 was it? No, they're still pushing Little Big Planet on Sony ads. They, they, I think they well, put they out a PSP game. Just I think they put out a Game of the Year edition for it actually, where they yeah. had a, they had a bunch of DLC um, included with it. I just got the, the whole game is DLC. No, 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 it's not. It's all user created maps. Isn't no, it? no, no. It, there's a lot of that, but it's... Oh, are you talking about the like, costumes like that DLC? No, they put they put yeah costumes and levels in there, mm. but the game itself is not that. I mean, it's not a shell game. It's no, I, th- I thought that was the whole idea. Like the game was tools to make your own levels. The I know, game I know there, there, tools. To make there your is, own. I mean, there is a sort of game to it, but the actual, the majority of the game is user created stuff, right? No, really? I, would, I, would, I mean, I'm sure there's people who play that game for two years straight, and they would say yes to that. But 
I played the game and played through the campaign. It was eight levels with three, like, individual levels inside those levels. Whatever the hell you want to call it. Like, <laughs> 8-1. I don't know what the fuck you call it. Sub-levels. Uh, let's do Super Mario on there, too. Oh, yeah. That's New a Super great, Mario great game. Oh, okay. I'm going to talk about some real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I go to buy Super Mario Brothers for the Wii. The yes. new one that came out. came out, what, two weeks ago? Yes, the four-player Wii game. Okay. It's fucking sold out. Sold out. <laughs> it is sold out. It's impossible. That's shocking. That's it for me, okay? That is, that's the end. Fuck I'm it. not buying any more Nintendo stuff. Because you cannot tell me that they cannot produce enough discs to get stuff on the shelves. It sold, we saw the NPD numbers, it sold, what, a fourth of what Modern Warfare? It sold Warfare? 1. 1.39 million copies. And Modern Warfare 2 sold how many? 6 million. And it's not sold out anywhere. No, you yeah. can go, you can buy 10 copies of Modern Warfare in every store in America right now. So Nintendo is literally manufacturing this demand yes. where you go in and you find that something is sold out. I understand, I understand with hardware, but for a disc... No fucking way. No, yeah, absolutely. It's the easiest thing in the world to do is mass-produce discs. What, was it even out in Japan before it came here? I don't know. How can you underproduce that game? You, you have more consoles on the market than any other console. Yeah. The, and if they didn't, they didn't make a million copies? They didn't make two million copies? They literally did not make two million copies. It doesn't game. make sense. And there's not a store in Austin you can go in right now and buy that game. And it's not because they get 50 copies every Tuesday in at every store and they're immediately off the shelves. They get three or four in, and those three or four are sold. Yes. Yep. There is no... And it's like, make an appointment to show up, and maybe you'll get your Super Mario. Yeah, it's stupid. It, it's fucking stupid. It's really stupid. It's insulting. I mean, the only other thing I can assume is that their margins at that company are so fucking slim that they can't end up with discs on the shelves. Dude, at the level that they're producing, at that they're manufacturing discs, those discs are almost free to make. You gotta figure it. It's yeah. fucking bullshit. They're they're paying they're paying pennies to make a disc. Yeah, it's it's some kind of weird like make an extra consumer m- punishment that they're going through. Yeah, there. I'm taking, well, I'm taking them off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Bernie just turned into Alex Jones there all of a sudden? Did you see that? No, Even no the hand motions and the yelling it was great. He's justifiably. Upset. Oh no no, absolutely it's true. I mean Nintendo, the, people who love the Wii say, oh my Wii's the best console ever. It's like no no it's not. And the, the games that come out like oh well every game sells out every time. It's, it's this exactly you know. When uh, uh, Smash Brothers Brawl comes out, and it's like, oh, you know, it sold two million copies first day. It's like, well, because there's no other fucking games for the Wii. Yeah, that <laughs> that's anybody one wants big to thing. play. But if you have how many consoles in the market? Twenty five million. Yeah, twenty five million consoles on the market, and you don't have the faith to print more than two million of your own fucking game. Yeah, you know, it's like it's some kind of giant ruse. I mean, I don't know why if I'm a developer, I'd ever make a game for the Wii ever because yeah. they don't have the faith that they can sell their own major th- their primary title. Free they Mario. can't sell it. Two million, two million copies they didn't be like if MS printed a half a million ODST discs for day one. Yeah, and we'll work it out from there. Yeah. Like if people want it, we'll do post orders or something. It's fucking retarded. borrow it from your friend, right? It's fucking retarded. and, and the, the the really annoying thing about it too is that that's a kid's console and that's a kid's game. Kids are going to want to play that game, so they're actively. Creating some kind of situation where they're going to disappoint kids at Christmas. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations, Nintendo. You're Thank, the fucking Grinch. Thanks for ruining Christmas. They, I did see uh, NPD numbers the other day for the ten best selling games of the year. I wish I had it in front of me. I don't, but only two games were non Nintendo games. Wow. Modern Warfare and ODST. The other eight were fucking Wii titles. Wii or DS, probably. Yeah, Wii or DS. When does that DS big screen come out here? I don't know. It's I thought question. it was out. The XL or whatever. I else. think it's out in Japan, and it'll be here, and they won't have enough units to sell here. I'm sure. <laughs> Did Super Mario come out in Japan before it came out in the U.S.? No I idea. don't know. And in this case, I don't, it may not have. This may have been the first global launch. I th- I'm probably it, wrong. It must have. It, they don't get to use the word launch. They just they get to say start because launch <laughs> implies velocity and a vector. The, the global <laughs> trickle, and, and they have, they, have, they have neither. God, it's so it's so fucking aggravating. It's frustrating. Yeah. I mean, it, it just shows it just shows a lack of their understanding of what the American consumer experience is like. I played that game at a friend's party to about a week ago, and it was so much fun. I thought maybe I'll go buy a Wii so I can play this game. And I went to Best Buy the other day. I was picking up another game. I don't remember what it was at Saboteur maybe. And I thought, yeah, I'll see. No, just not there. Game been out two weeks. And, and the Wii itself, it's stupid. I, they, hopefully I, that was in stock. Yeah, the Wii was in stock, but I wasn't going to buy it without the game. I would have impulse purchased the game and the Wii and given Nintendo $300 of my money. But instead, I'm never going to do it. Right. Because the impulse is over. I don't want the game badly enough now, and I'm mad at them. But I think what they do is they generate this thing where if you see it in stock, 
you say, okay, I have to get it because it's here. Yeah, yeah. But you fucking he... Mario, dude, you're going to buy it anyway. Well, I got started. It's not I like agree. anybody's going to stand there with our arms folded and go, oh, new Mario game. I don't know. They do have 50. I can always come back next week. No, it's Mario. You're going to buy it. It's Master Chief. You're going to buy it. Yep. It's Grand Theft Auto. You're going to buy it. There are certain titles that you know are going to sell. It's Gossip Girl. You're going to buy it. It's Gossip Girl. <laughs> you're going to buy it. Yeah. What is Gossip Girl? What is it? It's Blake Lively. What happens on an episode? All... Give me an average episode of Gossip Girl. It's just like a, it's like a, uh, like Felicity or Dawson's Creek. Oh my or God. Any of those shows. Or Dawson's Creek. Or it's like any of those shows that's like deals with like high school, college age teens living in a city. Like, you know. Is it on MTV? Trying to make it. No, it's on CW. <sighs> Can we talk about Jersey Shore? No, no. Let's keep talking about it <laughs> just for a minute longer. It's about like rich upper, uh, upper east side New York kids. Oh, so people, like... people I would hate basically. So I, I have a question about this. So yeah. when you're watching an episode of Gossip Girl, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I just, dude, I, I like simple good question. TV. That's all I can say. I appreciate good television. That's what I, you I, don't have TV. How do you watch it? Netflix. And I'm they in. put up current episodes. You're watching old ones. No, I'm, I'm watching on disc. I'm watching season one right now. Oh, really? Yeah. So they've solved their drama though, and, and here you are behind. I'm trying to catch up. They've already moved ahead. <laughs> There's new drama every week. Don't worry. That was, I, I had issues with the movie uh, Cloverfield. I mean, like, this is a weird jump, but you know, the, you know the movie Cloverfield, right? Yes. To jump from something shitty to something shitty. Exactly. The, the reason why I hated Cloverfield was the main characters in that movie were the the snobby, super rich, elite people from New York City. These young yuppies in New York City. Yeah. And those were your main characters. And immediately, I'm like, I don't like any of these people. Like, the only people I liked in that whole movie was the guy operating the camera. I was going to say, the, he, guy, the guy with the camera. Yeah, because he was kind of goofy and kind of dumb. And it's like, all right, well, I can, I, I like this guy, but fuck everyone else. And then, then the movie was boring. <laughs> There's no monster. I thought it was pretty cool. I like the, the scene where they went up in the, uh, when the skyscraper fell over. That was awesome. That was pretty and, neat. And they, they walked out. I liked the whole movie. I thought it was great. I really? I had no problem with it. Yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I don't know. I got, I got bored. Like, I, I, I saw people in the movie that, like, like, a cop and his son. Like, I would rather see that guy's story. Than these this yuppie who's about to move to Hong Kong, you know, like I guess. So uh, everybody in every compelling character in every movie or TV show that you watch has to be like poor or middle class. You can't. There can be well, no. There can be no divergence in culture. Or background if you if you want to relate to these characters, you want someone you can like feel for. But it's like these everybody people. Everybody has like to be all. like. Everybody has to be like a. Here we go. Mid twenties Texan going. who lives with his parents. Yes. For it to be an entertaining. That's story it. Again. No, I don't get it. Let, let me tell you an episode of Mad Men. Guy goes into his office. Another guy in a suit comes into his office. They start smoking and drinking whiskey, and then they hit on the secretary. Then they sell Maytag washers, and then somebody gets divorced. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, see, that doesn't seem compelling to me. And that, and that Maria, crazy. And that Maria Hendricks, Hendricks chick is in it. Yeah, oh it's my all, god, she's back on the show too. Is she? Oh, she, she was, was off the show. Well, she kind of went away. Not to give any spoilers if you haven't watched Mad Men, but she kind of just as a natural evolution of the story, she went away for a little bit and then came back. See, I don't think I, the thing that that turns me off to that show, and I'll I'll sit down and watch it, and I'm sure it's a really good show. It's a good show, and I know that it's written by women, and I know that a lot of the writers are from The Sopranos, and that it's very well produced, and I hear nothing but great things about it. But the 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 misogynistic overtones, I think, would bother me. Take it easy. Says the guy who watches Gossip Girl. <laughs> Take it easy. What's So? What's wrong? <laughs> I'm, I'm more in touch with my inner female than you are. I can watch Gossip Girl. Take it easy. And Veronica Mars. Yeah. Okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, all those clearly sexually balanced video games you play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that's a, that's a form of entertainment that you're <laughs> quite at ease with. Yeah. Totally. So how's the uh, nudity DLC and saboteur treating you? Wow. By the way, why the fuck am I in the comic? Like, I'm playing Saboteur. <laughs> I, I never even touched the game, and you're the one over there with your, your new, to the, you know, what are you in, like, some kind the of French? The first shot of the game is a topless chick Dude, <laughs> singing. You have to ask my wife. I don't write the comic. I so, <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want to put you in it. She doesn't want to. Your she, wife just popped up. <laughs> yeah, that. that's funny. She doesn't want me to be in every comic, obviously, so we got to, like, got to take creative license. As hey. soon as you said my wife, she popped up on AIM. That's say, funny. There, what do you think she Hey, wants? Brandon made the comic no for idea. the first time ever, right? Yeah, he... Was he excited about that? He was pretty excited. Did he get a shirt? Did he get a print made? Uh, I think he might have for his mom. <laughs> I think he's going to frame it and send it to his mom. <laughs> okay, here's what we have for video games for the year. Okay. okay. We have Assassin's Creed 2. ODST. Was Dead Space last year? Last year. Okay. That was last year. 2008. ODST. Brutal Legend. Batman. Arkham Asylum. Uncharted 2. And he scratched out via protest Super Mario Brothers Wii. 
So I'm going to leave that on. I right. know there was other stuff that was yeah. good, but I can't think of it. I mean, I mean there's, there's a lot of... Modern, like, do we put, is Modern Warfare 2 on there? Uh, I left it off. There's a lot of decent games, like Godfather 2 and Saboteur. But, I wouldn't vote for Modern Oh, Warfare. Dragon Age. I'm going to put Dragon Age up there. People really dig that. Yeah, but we gotta, we can kind of whittle these down. We're not the Oscars. We're not 10 nominees in each it's category. True. It's true. All right, so let's, let's whittle this down. TV shows. I'm going to go through this again. 30 Rock, V, Office, South Park, Mad Men, Gossip Girl, Lust... Oh, Lost. Lost. Hey, <laughs> hey no. That'd be an awesome show. Lost and Dexter. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I would take off V. Okay, that's your veto. You get a veto, Jeff. What are you going to veto? I'll actually veto Gossip Girl because I haven't seen this season. I don't know if it's good. Okay, for me. So we get done, done to... What are you knocking off, Bernie? I'm not going to knock off Dexter, but I'm going to knock off South Park because best show of the thing. And then I'm going to knock off Office. Come on. I, I thought this was a good season of Office. Really? Uh, would, you vote, would you vote for Office or would you vote for Matt? Or Office or 30 Rocks? Either. I would vote for Ooh. 30 Rock over the Office. That'd be tough. That'd be a coin flip for me. All right, fuck it. So then we're, we're settling on six then. Okay. The okay. show, the shows are, I say the shows are a coin flip every week though. See, That's true. The, see, here's the problem with the VGA. The VGA was just, what came out most recently, and I granted a lot of cool games come out at the end of the year, but it definitely seemed like a tie between advertising and recognition were hand in hand. Yeah. Because everything was a promo. Even Zachary Quinto came out and they said, an upcoming force in voice acting in video games. And he came out and goes, I thought I would take this time to announce that I'm going to be the voice of the new Star Trek Online game, which launches in the first quarter of 2010. Hope to see you on there. It's like, wow. I couldn't imagine if somebody came out during a regular award ceremony like the Oscars or the Emmys and did something like that. They do that all the time no, at the Grammys, though. At the Grammys, they do, right. Video yeah. game people are worse than rappers, though. I mean, it's even like less genuous, you know, when you see them out there. Would you like to see someone like Penny Arcade do a legit video game award show? There's got to be somebody. Aren't there GDC awards? Are there? But they're not really open to the public. Why the fuck are you giving away ideas to Penny Arcade? Why don't we do that shit, dumbass? <laughs> well, no, I, I thinking... got a goddamn list right here. <laughs> he does. And you're like, hey, it would be great if somebody cool like Penny Arcade did that. <laughs> well, off. no, because they do the charity dinner. And that's what I was thinking of. Like, what's like, what's the sort of classy event in a video game? And I would say the Penny Arcade charity dinner is probably one of the most quote-unquote classy events, right? I went to that. Yeah, how was week. it? They raised well, an enormous amount of money. for. Uh, they started the month of December. They had already raised more than a million dollars for Child's Play, which is a charity they started where they donate video games and handheld video games to uh, children's hospitals. All over the world. So the kids who are you know going over these lengthy, boring, awful procedures, they at least have something fun to do while they're there. Yeah. You know what, Jack? You should uh, look into getting a job at Penny Arcade. You've got so many <laughs> awesome ideas for them. Yes. You could, I, I just you watched. Might be, the, you might be a perfect fit for that. Company. I just watched the uh, second episode of the Penny Arcade uh, series, the reality show they're doing, or I guess not reality. What do you? What would we call that? Web Web reality? That's a reality show. Sure. Reality they, show. I think they called it a reality show when they talked about. It. They were in a Wired magazine article and they called it that. Did you guys get interviewed for that at no. PAX? Did we? No, I don't think, I don't so. think we did. I didn't. No. Know. I was just. I got to go. Thanks for bringing that up, though. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone at Penny Arcade listen to the podcast? I would imagine that. You don't think so? You think Koo's taking time out of his day to listen to podcasts? <laughs> they were playing ping pong on the on the show. They have a ping pong stadium in their uh, in their office. Stadium? Did you what? see their bleachers that they have? I didn't see the bleachers, but I saw the, the layout. And actually, it was, it was two, two of the guys in the show, and they were those guys were going at it, man. Like they don't fuck around. I was there after the dinner. I went with Koo over there, and it was very late. And they have a they have a ladder on their whiteboard. There. Yeah, it's it's in the it's in the episode. Oh, yes. Okay, so they you know they can challenge each other and. Apparently, Koo, the guy who runs Penny Arcade Incorporated, uh, is the head the head ping ponger. Is he? Yeah, he's Asian. What are you going to do? Yeah, you know? let's say it's <laughs> in his blood. All right. All right. What's next? Uh, video games awards. So now we're up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got to eliminate some video games here. All right. Let's. Not uh, a problem. I didn't play Dragon Age, so I can eliminate that. I didn't. Pl- I didn't play it either. Actually, Jeff, you didn't play it. At all. No, I didn't play it. Either. <laughs> So we have Uncharted 2, Super Mario, Modern Warfare 2, Dragon Age. I haven't played Super Mario. Should we eliminate them because they're because they're not available? Sure. Just fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them. They'll be available in two. We could do. We could do. Well, can't be the best game of the year. If we we could do. Can't play it. We'll do best next gen system because the Wii is still standard now. Oh wow. Ooh. This is taking it to another Our level. Current gen. We yeah. Were, we, current. We were keeping it professional. Man. You got to take cheap shots. Yeah. All right. Assassin's Creed 2, ODST, Brutal Legend, Batman, Uncharted 2, Modern Warfare, and Dragon Age. Yeah, I would probably take Dragon Age off that list. Really? Uh, I think so. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. that puts us at one, two. Three, when did Fallout Three come out? Four, was five, that this six. year? No, last year. All right, Dragon Age is off. That gives us six, so we're good. And then we'll take a nomination from the uh, audience. From the audience as well. Maybe they should can, we do a movie now. If they feel strongly about it, they can put Dragon Age back on. Once again, go to rushi.com/slash/drunktank. 
I said slash. And buy, and buy a shirt, too, while you're at it. I said slash like I was drunk. You did. It's all part of the... You said slash like slosh. I did. All right, so the next one we're going to do is movies. And w- since before we do the movies thing, why don't you talk a little Holy bit about... Holy crap. So this last weekend I went to Buttonumathon, the 24-hour movie festival. Actually, it was 26-and-a-half-hour movie festival this year. Sitting in one theater at the Alamo Draft House South Lamar location, watching some of the best movies that will come out next year. Now, I have been to this in the past. You went, you went to one of the worst. If no, you went to the worst, be not. But I went to a great year where we saw three hundred six months before it came out, and I was in Rocky Five, and, it, and Black Snake Moan, and it was really cool. Then I went the next year, and it was hard. It is it very was hard. Painful. It's very it's very hard to sit through even on a good year. Sit through twenty four hours of movies. It's yeah. it, it's difficult to sit there and watch, 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 watch. Yeah. And uh, Alamo does serve food, but you just kind of like you kind of lose it. It's a, yeah. It's also a pacing issue too, because if you if you hit a movie you don't like, you then have to sit through it, and it, it kind of can dampen the rest of the the time you're in there. Actually. Yep. And then I went the next year, and it was brutal. Yeah. Was, the ne- the next year was pretty rough. It was brutal. I think the best movie they showed that year was Sweeney Todd. A week before it came out, Dreamgirls, I think you saw too, right? Yeah, that was the year before. I'm going to stick with my original analysis that <laughs> Sweeney Todd was the best movie. <laughs> they also showed uh, Charlie Wilson's War. That was a good movie. Yeah, but these three movies we just mentioned were the first three movies, so it starts at noon, and we had seen all of those movies. Yeah, goes, I think it, Sweeney Todd was like around eight. Yeah, it goes noon to noon. Noon uh, start noon on Saturday goes till noon on Sunday. And uh, this year, so we saw six premieres and then six vintage films, and then we actually we had one quote unquote presentation. We got to see the Iron Man two trailer, awesome, really, really awesome. The the end of the trailer, it's War Machine and Iron Man back to back, just stomping ass. It's it's badass. So what were the premieres you saw? Uh, the premieres we saw, we saw Kick Ass, which is uh, Matthew Vaughn's new movie. The guy did Layer Cake. He also did Stardust. Um, we saw Stardust was a good movie. It was a good movie. Very underrated. Uh, disliked it. Really? You like? You really you just liked it? Why? Yeah. Um, I guess because I read the book. Oh, I yeah. know it was a book. Yeah. That was a gaming book, right? Yeah. Um, then we saw uh, Shutter Island, the new Martin Scorsese movie. I'm really excited for that. Holy shit! That that movie really t- caught me off guard. Uh, we saw Avatar, of course. Uh, we saw The Lovely Bones, which is the new Peter Jackson movie. Also excited for that. We saw an indie an indie horror film by the guy who did Hatchet oh, called man. Frozen, which uh, has Sean Ashmore in it, who was in. Uh, he used Iceman in the X-Men movies, and it's, it's, it's a fun little horror movie, like a real, you know, uh, it's a smaller budget, but really fun, tense movie. And then we saw a French movie called Micmax, or Micmax, I'm not sure how you say it, but it's M-I-C-M-A-C-S, and uh, that was a, a fun little movie, too. But if, if you were to ask me what order would I put them in, I would say Kick-Ass was by far the winner of BNAT this year. Wow. It's it's. It, it was incredible. That's a comic book, right? Kick-ass? Yes, it's a comic book, and uh, the, the guy who was writing the book uh, was actually working with Matthew Vaughn while he was finishing sort of the the first uh, trade to to kind of complete the movie. Like they worked together to finish the book and the movie pretty much at the same time. And uh, it's got Nick Cage in it. And uh, well, you just you just lost me. <laughs> oh no 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 no! This is this is good Nick Cage. Trust me. Okay, Nick. I, got, I don't want to spoil. It. The movie comes out in April. I don't want to say anything about don't, it. Don't, don't, don't. You need, you need to see Just this movie, a good movie in a theater. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. The six Just premieres the, you saw were good movies. For the record, Gus is not here, so keep this spoiler free. Okay. Because yeah, right? <laughs> one of the other movies you saw is a movie that everybody wants to see. Which Avatar. Is, you saw Avatar already. Yeah. Just real quick, thumbs up, thumbs down. Just uh, on which one? Uh, on, on Avatar. On Avatar, uh, I would say three quarters up. <laughs> Can you say up or down? Uh, I would say up. You need to see that movie in a theater. But it's... All right. Um, I don't know if it lives up to the hype. For me. For me. I, you know, though, it, okay, it's, but, it's in this weird transcendental hype area now where it. I can't figure out if the hype is pro or con at this point. Yeah. There's well, a lot of negative hype, too. The, the, problem, the problem with Avatar for me was I saw Kick-Ass immediately before Avatar. And Kick-Ass was a perfect movie for the time. The audience, everything about that movie was perfect. Um, like, and also the thing about Kick-Ass too, it's, it's, they're still developing it. So the the music's not done yet. So all the music was a temp score. And so he had, it's, it, this is officially the BNAT cut because he had music from Superman mixed in with it. Music from Batman mixed in with it. Uh, stuff that will not make the final film, but was Well, you don't know so that for perfect. sure. Could no, be. no, he came out and said, no, there's no way we're getting that. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, I mean, there's stuff from Dark Knight in there and yeah. Anyway, it, it was great. Um, but if you had to, if you had to, if I had to order my movies and favorite Kick-Ass is number one with a bullet, then Shutter Island, 
then it's a tie for third between Lovely Bones and Avatar. And if you really push me, I'd say Avatar is the fourth best. Okay. Which is kind of surprising, considering the amount of you know buzz there was going into Avatar, I thought. It's James Cameron. But you also saw Lovely Bones in a very pro-Peter Jackson environment. That's true. Because this is put on by Ain't It Cool News, and it's, it's, it's a celebration of Harry Knowles' birthday every yeah year. yeah i will say mark Wahlberg is in lovely lovely bones and after seeing his bits from the happening and then seeing him in this <laughs> so much better oh really oh yeah he's, that's good yeah he's he's really good rachel wise is in it too she's awesome so best movies of 2009 then yeah we gotta get back to that. real quick did harry do any of his torture movies he he showed a a shaw brothers horror movie called centipede centipede terror which uh, the Shaw Brothers did a lot of martial arts movies. Yeah. And, like, this is probably early 70s, and it was really, really twisted mess up. And uh, he also showed Candy Snatchers, was a, which was a movie about a group of people kidnapping a young girl. And wow. That, that was kind of painful. That's Yeah. Harry will put out movies in the middle of the night, like on 2 a.m., that are just meant to torture you. Yeah. And test your endurance. And I failed last year. Because he did that one, or the previous year, when he did um, that French documentary yeah, about uh, a slavery in America. And God. And it was just like... That was horrible. You wanted, you wanted to shoot yourself in the theater. You want to pull out a gun and shoot yourself. And shoot everybody around you, too. Yeah. That, that's one of those movies... feeling. You know, people like historians, like, oh, we need to save everything. Like, no, that needs to be forgotten. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> let's just burn the prints of that one. All right. Uh, so let's go. Best movies of 2009. What do you got, Jeff? I don't know much. I don't... <clears throat> Up. Yep. I haven't been to the movies much this year. You know, this wasn't a great year for movies. Star Trek. I went through. Star Trek. I yeah. went through all the movies of the year, and uh, it was hard to find you know big ones. There was ones that we went and saw, like GI Joe and Transformers, when but they certainly weren't theaters. things that you would like want to go back and rewatch or award in any way. Uh, District Nine. My, my, yep. my I, I didn't like it, but most people did. My quote unquote Gossip Girl entry would be Five Hundred Days of Summer. Yeah, you like that? I love that movie. I did never saw it. Girlfriend Experience come out this year? Yes. Yes. I like that a lot. I'd put that on the list. Okay. Uh, so then we can have an independent category, I guess, or, you know, a vying for the independent slot. Sure. Because I would say for the independent slot, uh, I would definitely have to put in either Hurt Locker, which was incredible. That was great. You saw it? Yeah. Yeah. It was about a guy who is in Iraq and he's one of these EOD guys, EOD guys yeah. who disarms bombs that they find on the side of the road. And I thought it was an amazing movie. Uh, and then, I don't know if it counts as independent, but Taken came out in the U.S. Oh, shit. Taken is a fantastic movie. Yeah. I never saw that. I heard it was awesome. That's 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 my that's my pick for movie of the year. You're going to keep that wow. one? Yeah. Taken. Huh? Taken. Okay. And then also, Inglorious Bastards was a year. Right. I haven't yeah. seen it. And the Golden Globes were uh, la- yesterday. They announced them, right? Oh, did they? Yeah. Like, what, what, what did they pick? Can you look that up on I, your on the interwebs? I think I can. Please, I don't, please don't ever say that. I don't know. Yeah, don't say interwebs. I hate that. That's been banned from this office. Man. And intranets. I'm what? looking it up right now <laughs> to see what the Golden Globes nominated. I guess we'll just bite off their stuff. No. There we, we go. I think we should also do best trailer since there's uh, we'll include both video games and movies in there together. Okay. I have four that I came up with, and you guys think I'm kind of springing this category on you, but yeah. Now I got to think about trailers. There's a couple here that's just gonna be a clear winner. I think when I mention it, uh, I like the Reach trailer. Let's include that. Oh, I, video I already, video game. I already know what the best trailer is. What are you gonna say? Ahead. It's Old Republic. Old Republic trailer yeah, in there. Down. Tron the movie trailer. Yes, this year. it's cool. And and then I have to do a special call out to a trailer that actually made me laugh out loud a couple different times, which was uh, Youth in Revolt. Just, yeah, that yeah. trailer is awesome. Which one is that? It's a uh, what's his face? It's Michael uh, Michael Sarah. It's a it's a it's a book. It's like a teen book. I read it years and years and years ago. It's okay, good. it'll be a good movie. It's a funny story. It's about, basically about a kid trying to get laid. Oh, okay. And then what's the uh, Gentleman... Gentleman bus? Broncos? Bro- Gentleman Broncos. Yeah, Gentleman Broncos is good, a good, good trailer. Good trailer, rough movie. Well, you saw it? I saw it at Fantastic Fest. And? Eh. It's, it's the guy who did Napoleon Dynamite, the uh, the the Mormon dude. What's his name? Math- Jared Hess? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's nothing but just full of really twisted, weird characters and with a loose plot connecting them all. It's an excuse for Jermaine from uh, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, not tenacious. What is it? What's the band that Jermaine and he's uh, from? Brit? Uh, uh, I say fabulous Thunderbirds, and that's not right either. No, uh, Flight of the Flight of the Concord. Flight of the Concord. Thank you. Yeah, Jermaine from Flight of the Concord to dress up in tight jeans and wear a Bluetooth headset. It's, it's pretty funny. His character is funny, but and uh, all the stuff with Sam Rockwell is great, but. Up in the Air seems to be a big winner. Oh, people are loving Up in the Air. That's Jason Reitman. Yeah, it's getting a lot of nominations. Uh, Hangover was also this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. That was a good movie. It's coming out on DVD. Uh, or did it come out on DVD? Zombieland. People like that, right? Zombieland, right. 
So we're gonna we're gonna whittle this down fast. Does it turn it doesn't to... matter. Taken is the best movie out of all. Everything <laughs> I've I don't know. Up was Up was pretty you, great. Taken's better than Up. You haven't seen Hurt Locker? I haven't. I haven't. I mean, I went through I went through the week by week every you know movie that came out this year, and when I got to Taken, I was also like, oh, that was this year. Yeah, that was Dude, a great that... movie. The movie's tremendous. And in case you missed it, it's about Liam Neeson's daughter is captured in Paris. She's kidnapped in Paris, and he's in the U.S. and he's like an ex CIA special ops guy. Yeah, and he's yeah. older, and he knows he has a just gut feeling that something's gonna go wrong, he's, and sure enough, it does. Yeah, he's like new. His essentially like his uh, his career killed his marriage, and he's trying. He's retired to try to reconnect with his daughter, and like as soon as he does that, she gets taken. It's a pretty cool thing too, because like if you had to find someone in the world, could you find them? I mean, the world's a huge place. Liam, hey, Liam was... Neeson can. Yeah, apparently he can. <laughs> Did you hear about the the DARPA contest they ran, like, last weekend or two weekends ago? The Red Balloon Contest? So DARPA, the guys who created the internet, right? They ran this thing where they put up ten red balloons, like weather balloon-sized balloons, all over the country. Or, excuse me, the lower 48 states. And they basically said, the first group that can come to us with the location of all ten balloons wins. And I, I don't know if there was a prize. I think it was just who could do it. And uh, FARC actually had a group that put they, – they came in second, I want to say. They found eight. And in, in a matter of like – I want to say it was like six hours. Maybe maybe it was more than that. It was, maybe it was like eight or nine. But it, it was like in one day, like uh, it was the MIT group found all ten balloons spread throughout like, like all over. There was one in Houston, like Portland, like, and then like Atlanta. But they were all over the place, even yeah. smaller cities too. Red balloons sound cool. But what about fucking Norway? What about what's going on in the sky in Norway, dude? Oh, yeah. the, the alien portal? Yep. Yeah, dude, that's not cool. There's a spiral in the sky over Norway, with, or there was. Fucking, with like a blue light coming out of it. And they blamed it on a missile. Yeah. They said a, 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 a missile in caused Russia. it. Yeah, a Russian missile was fired and it caused that. And I think if we're down, down to the point where we're <laughs> blaming stuff on fired missiles, what are they trying to cover up? <laughs> I think we like, all... Nobody, nobody's batting an eyelash that, that Russia's been firing missiles. <laughs> we all know it's the Hadron Collider. LHC. It is right. Yeah, they it, felt they finally they got a successful test, right? Yeah, the oh, first one. That thing's it's up running, and dude. chugging. It's going right, right now. now. Fucking right. creating portals to hell over Norway. Did you see that the Gordon Freeman guy? Like, there's a guy who looks like Gordon Freeman who works the yeah. LHC. Yeah, that's oh, like that's that. great. Yeah, yeah. and they, they, they ma- like a group mailed him a crowbar and I think a head crab and something else. <laughs> like here, just in case, take the crowbar. You know, one of the uh, things they auctioned off at the Child's Play charity was a Steam key. That will be good for every game that Valve has ever made and will ever make. Wow, dude. What did that go for? I think $1,400. That's, per- that's a bargain. That yeah, is. it was a bargain. And I think there was a tour of uh, Bungie where you could come play the Reach multiplayer beta with eight of your friends. Or See, eight, eight people all together. As long why, as one of those friends did... isn't Tom Morella. <laughs> you know, that's, inter- that's interesting because we're talking about six-person co-op, but it's eight, of, it's eight people. Hey, hey. And they specifically chose eight people that you could come and play with. Hmm. Hey, so hey. What, what does that indicate? Obviously, we just broke a huge story on the podcast, well, on the Drunk public, Tank podcast. Public info it was on the uh, Child's Play charity. There we're we just, go. We're just making connections. It was you and seven of your friends. Anyway, so there chew on that. Black helicopter. And that went for, I think, $2,700, which, I mean, that's, What's a that's a bargain. Yeah. What, what was the highest priced item at the charity auction? It, uh, the Penny Arcade stuff always goes for the highest because that's why you're there. And I'm pretty sure the thing that went for the highest amount was um, Play... D and D in Gabe's D and D night, <laughs> and that, I think it went for like I want to say nine thousand wow. dollars. How, how much did the uh, the box of nothing go for? Or did they do that this year? They did the box of nothing this year, and the guy got it for twenty one hundred dollars. He got it, went up a stage, opened the box, and it was a four thousand dollars Sony Sony Bravia TV. Jesus. Wow, it was pretty cool. That is pretty that cool. is pretty cool. The guy was wearing a kilt, and he had to like. I, I was I was not the, cool anymore. I was in the table that was right at the front of the stage center right right there and he kept having to bend over to like rip the lower parts of the wrapping up I was like come on this is not this is not helping me <laughs> in any way in any way so Wait. are we are we locked on our movies i think we're i think we're, we have enough we have to trim it down a little bit here so let's I, go. what did you find what the golden globes had because i know we're missing stuff yeah yeah yeah. hold on one second i'll go, I'll go talk amongst yourselves i'll tell you what here's another one why don't you guys try to figure out what is the single best online video that you saw this year any video online, one-off series, whatever you saw. <laughs> there were, how many Mar- could, Maru videos were there? My current, my current favorite would have to be the lady that got drunk and stole the ambulance. <laughs> see, this is a category where the current stuff she's is always going to see. She's awesome. There I, has to be something we all watched a thousand times. I know there is. I just can't think of it. The cute kitty. 
I saw scared, an, scared kitty Surpri- I, I, surprise I, kitty surprise yeah. i saw an article uh recently it was uh in defense of jimmy fallon in the jimmy fallon show and basically like it was people saying that hey you know jimmy fallon's not doing as bad as people thought he was doing and they linked to 10 different videos of stuff he'd done on the show which included uh playing beer pong with betty white which was great and then one of the videos was um jimmy fallon doing uh performing as neil young doing the fresh prince of bel-air theme song and it, it, he he that nails it. Doesn't sound he funny. He <laughs> nails it. It's hilarious. Does anybody is anybody out there like that would watch the Jimmy Fallon show even know who Neil Young is? Yeah, I know no. who Neil Young is. Ne- I'd watch many, the Jimmy Fallon many, show. How many Neil Young songs can you name? Uh, three. Okay. Just for the sake of completion, I'm going to list everything the Golden Globes nominated. A okay. picture. Okay. Drama. They nominated Avatar. Okay. They nominated The Hurt Locker. How you like me now? Yeah, I nice. do like you. They nominate Inglorious Bastards. They nominated Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire. I hear that's good. Precious. They nominated Up in the Air. For a picture, musical or comedy, they nominated 500 Days of Summer. How do you like Jack? Hey. They nominated The Hangover, It's Complicated, Julia and Julia, and Nine, the animated movie. Nine. Which I did see, and I would not say that was the best movie of the year. Right. I, I saw the original animated short it was based on. What? Nine is, I, nine's in there, but Up's not in there? What the fuck, dude? Did wow. Up didn't get nominated for just best movie? And it's in for animated film. Why is it an animated film but Nine is not? That's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, animated films are Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Coraline, <laughs> Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Princess and the Frog, and Up. Wow. That's weird. They're, they're, they're stupid. So uh, are, you, are you sure Nine is an animated film? Are you sure Tim Burton hasn't found a world of creatures <laughs> yeah, that, that look like Tim Burton creatures he and just filmed it? He invented life. I actually saw Nine... Um, because somebody somebody told me to go see it because of the 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 whole they were drawing correlations between that and the reconstruction epsilon oh. you know omega AI theory stuff and so I went and see it saw it just because of that and I wasn't I didn't I didn't see the connection I also didn't have a connection with the movie in general <laughs> it, all the characters kind of look the same which coming from the guy who makes Red vs Blue <laughs> was, I realized a little uh, a little bit of a ridiculous criticism but it was kind of hard to to disassociate from that dude the the characters in Reach look sick. Oof. I keep coming back to that trailer. Like the model design in that game looks awesome. It looks, it's one of those weird things too because you read people who, when you go on the forums, you read people who say it looks just like Halo Three, and right next to it, someone's saying, "I can't believe how unbelievable this game looks." Yeah, it's same, been like same that. criticism for every Bungie game, exactly. every Halo game. I mean, you will see people who say in every forum, "Halo Two looks just like Halo One." Halo 3 looks just like Halo 2, that and was now the Halo Reach. big fucking complaint about Halo 3 that drove us crazy. Yeah. Because we were doing apples-to-apples apples comparisons in the office because we were about to start filming in Halo 3, and we had Halo 2 in front of us, and you know we would cut from shot to shot. Light and, night and day, dude. Yeah. Come on. There's no comparison between well, those two games. Also, if that's the case all along, that's that would say that Halo looks just like Halo Reach. Right. Which is not, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Obviously not the case. Yeah, it's ridiculous. In fact, at one point, the nice thing that that Halo does every now and then is they'll put out an exact replica of a map in DLC, or they'll just include it, like Zanzibar and Last Resort. One year, I put the Wizard, or not the Wizard, Wizard from Halo and Warlock from Halo 2. Those are right next to each other. I did a split screen between the two levels. It was unbelievable, the difference between Halo and Halo 2, but people you know, still complain that it looks the same. Man, not to get too far off topic, but Gus, uh, Gus is not here. Jack and I are doing uh, Spec Ops videos for Call of Duty, catching up on it. Oh, God, that's And so we much just fun. played the one that is the remake of All Gillied Up on Modern Warfare. Oh, yeah. It was fucking great to play that <laughs> yeah. map again. I cannot tell you how much fun it was to replay uh, that A lot map. of the Spec Ops stuff is just repurposed maps from the first game. It was really cool and a really fun experience. Yeah, the uh, the Overwatch one where you were in the AC-130 and I was running was yeah. was a farm level from Modern yeah. Warfare, which a bunch of people pointed that out. I guess we didn't mention in the video. So. Yeah. Uh, right. also, so people are also about Reach before we get too far from that. People are complaining that uh, the I guess the Spartans in Reach aren't the Spartans from the book. That is, uh, that's a, actually a major complaint that I've read. Yeah. It's like the, the, the big the, thing, the, the big Mark Threes or Mark Twos. I don't know. I'm, I, I never read the books. Right. They're saying that a, a big criticism that I'm reading is that in the books they talked about how you couldn't distinguish the Spartans from one another except by simple body language, even the women from the men sometimes, and that the doctor, Doctor Halsey, was the only one who could really tell them apart. And clearly, you can tell them apart in yeah. Halo Reach. Well, yeah, one asks. Yeah, one had a handprint on his face. Well, something that's confusing to me is that. Is the the EVA armor the one with the big gold dome? Mm-hmm. That's covered in one of the books, is what those are, um, or at least a variant thereof. And in Halo Three, you can unlock all that stuff. But one of the helmets you can unlock is ODST. So, 
does that make your character an ODST in Halo 3, or is he a Spartan with an ODST helmet? It's not, I mean, it, it's no longer clear, are, are they Spartans? We assume they are, because one of them was called George, and it's before they were all dead, and a lot of them died on Reach. So I just think it's unclear right now, and you've got to give the benefit of the doubt and see what they work out. I hope, I hope there's yeah. a good story attached to it. I'm pretty sure there will be. Yeah. <laughs> I have a strong feeling. Yeah. So, and once again, we're unsure, is this the last Bungie Halo game? Every time one comes out, it seems like it's going to be the last Halo game. So maybe this is the last See, go round for Bungie. But, Halo. I mean, but Bungie, I mean, that's like it's like capturing lightning in a bottle. It's like why would you step away from that? Like, five, well, they well, made five. I mean, and why would you step away from what making Halo games? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, why? I don't know. I mean, we've done yeah. Red versus Blue for seven years, and I know we love it to death. But I wouldn't mind doing something a little different every once in a while, right? How, how dare you? <laughs> Let's go get a job at Pity Arcade. <laughs> No, I can understand. I mean, it's just, you know, you work on other stuff, but I don't think it will be. I think they'll continue to make Halo games in addition to other games. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I wouldn't be shocked by that. I mean, like, I mean, you guys have been doing, like, Rooster Teeth shorts and the comic and, you know, Achievement Hunter now. It's like, you know, you, we all, you The all, runaway success that is Achievement Hunter. It's doing very well. We had, we had our largest month ever, right? Yeah, that's good. So, month. best online videos. Anything else that you can think of? God, I, there's a billion, yeah. and I know I'm missing them. I, I want to nominate one that I remembered from early on. I actually liked the girl at first. But now I like the guy version of it, which was his name is Daichi. He was the beatbox wildcard guy earlier in the year. Oh, yeah. Where he was doing the beatbox stuff. Amazing. Have you seen this? Yeah, I think I have. Yeah. Is it just like the throat stuff? I'm gonna, yeah. I, I don't know if I don't, I don't know if this counts because it's it's just it's uh just a commercial, but I saw it online and that's the Biz Marquee camera <laughs> commercial. Oh snap. <laughs> oh snap. Uh, you gotta say the Muppet Bohemian Rhapsody. Muppet I did Bohemian. not like that. Really? You didn't like that? No, not really. Oh. See, that's the other thing too, you can get very divisive, you know? Yeah. God, I, w- I watch probably 10 online videos a day, and you're asking me to pick. It's so hard. A year is so long. <laughs> it's like it's like 360 something days. What did we days. watch over and over? The only thing I can remember in this office that got watched over and over and over and over again this year <laughs> was Old Republic. Oh, how can you slap? Was that this year? How can you slap? I don't know. I mean, a lot of these. You <laughs> know, I know we watched that a lot this year. A lot of these don't get discovered for like two or three months now. Yeah, and yeah. then suddenly they they work their way up. God, there's been so many. We'll have to, we'll have to take the nominations. We watched from... the. Uh... Well, I, watched, I watched the animated GIF of that dude punching that chick in Jersey Shore probably for ten minutes. Do you straight. know they pulled that from the episode? Yeah, they showed it in the promo, and then now the next episode they're not going to show it at all. God, I hate MTV. I hate them too, man. And their 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 fucking press release about that was so retarded. And they're like, after. Watching it and hiring experts to look at it, we've determined that it's not appropriate and that, that violence of this kind is not appropriate. Like, do you, did you really have to hire experts to tell yeah. you that a dude punching a chick in the face on fucking on a channel that's primarily watched by fourteen year old kids is not appropriate? Right, and your editor sitting there for probably ten hours on that one shot, getting the right angle and the right timing on it, and everything. And every fucking higher up and every exec at MTV fucking approved that thing because you know it went through standards and practices. Ah, oh, there we go. There's. Uh... Is it, did the uh, this makes my taco pop ad? Was that this year? That video makes my taco pop. Have you seen that? The Sean Johnson. The <laughs> uh, there's a video. Did for you guys it. see the, the the Home Shopping Network guy who throws the Wii controller through the TV? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Very appropriate. Got all the Home we Shopping. We can also we can also have like best moment of 2009. Like what was the defining moment? Was David Letterman's thing the defining moment of 2009? Tiger, Tiger Kanye, Kanye interrupting Taylor West. God. Uh, God, I don't know. You know, it's so funny to me when you look back at that, the, the Kanye West thing. People were so incensed about that. How come nobody sees that that was staged? It wasn't a month before that or two months before that that the whole Bruno Eminem thing went down. Yeah. And we all thought, you know, at first that it wasn't staged. And clearly it was staged. They even said later that it was staged and Eminem was in on the joke. I, I guarantee if Taylor Swift did not know that Kanye was coming up onto that stage, then somebody in her management definitely knew. Sure. Do you know the dude that she's dating from Twilight? He was on SNL last week. They, they did, did you a, watch they it? Did a, they yeah, did a bit I about did. it. It was kind of funny. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. I, I, for a kid that age, too, to like call himself out like that, how he did that. <laughs> yeah. That was – honestly, yeah, that was pretty funny. He was on stage. He, I don't think he was dating her at the time. My wife knows all this. She was explaining to me. Oh, they weren't dating at that time. But he was there. Him backing up. <laughs> he was like one of the rows of presenters, and they presented the award to her, and then Kanye interrupts. And he points himself out as doing his, his – and look how much I helped her. And you see him, like, backing up and hiding behind somebody else <laughs> once Kanye comes up on the stage. It was pretty funny. Yeah. That kid's from Austin, isn't he? Or San Antonio? I think he was in Shark Boy. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he is, is Shark Boy. Boy. Yeah. Team Shark Boy. Which I think was made in Austin. That kid's 17? I, I think. He's, he's under 18. I know that. Okay. Why does that matter? 
Why do you even know that? Well, because <laughs> no, be, because I have I have female friends that are going bonkers for this kid, going, "Oh my god!" I, you know, I jump on him, or whatever. And it's like that's a seventeen year old boy. Female friends. <laughs> <laughs> Your female friends watch a gossip, gossip Girl instead of playing Left 4 Dead too? Because <laughs> yeah. I think I know who you're no, talking like my about. My sister's into it. I, I yeah, she has all these friends that love the Twilight movies, and those those movies just piss me off because like, oh, it's a vampire movie. Like, no, 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 that's an that's an immortal pervert movie. I those are love not vampires. Twilight. I'm gonna say it what? again. I love Twilight. Why? I because I like the fact that there's something in the world that teenage girls can still scream like lunatics. Yeah, about. it's like the new Beatles. Ugh. Yep. And if teenage girls weren't able to scream about that, like they couldn't just lose themselves, then I would be worried about this world. Yeah, you need you need something like that every decade or so. Yeah, right? you need other girls aren't so jaded. Yeah, not well, just girls, well, but I mean, you need something like that that causes some sort of a what was that in the nineties? International fervor. What was that in the nineties? Oh, I got to nominate something. I got to nominate something for online video of the year. Cat versus cop. Oh. That was funny. <laughs> oh, cat versus video. cop was funny. Yeah. That is a good one. There was oh, a- no, no. I got it. I got it. The fucking world's smartest criminal. The dude that ate his own... Uh, oh, that was good. ate his own... Dude, uh, drunk guy. Mode. Drunk guy at the uh, at the convenience store. The, the oh, guy defi- shit. <laughs> dude, this might have been... 2009 was a good year. Yeah, that guy was defying gravity. You know what's crazy is when I saw stuff like Break, when they first started their model, we're going to put up about three videos a day of stuff we don't make, but that just gets submitted to us that's funny out in the world. I thought, okay, there's maybe 200 of these videos, and they're going to go through them in the first three months. There's three videos a day. Yeah. There's somebody lighting themselves on fire or – by the way, I like, saw – f- Failing at a backflip. Yep. It never stops. Nope. It's an endless stream of those People guys. will always be stupid. Uh, yeah. The, 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 as long as there are trampolines in the world, we'll have videos. <laughs> as long as there's ledger fluid and friends. <laughs> world's, the world's most gravity, gravity-defying drunk oh. and then world's smartest <laughs> criminal. Yeah, those, those, <laughs> that guy eating that note. <laughs> those two are both instant classics. <laughs> I just love how you reach it. It's like hungry, hungry hippos. The way he goes for that thing. And what we will, <laughs> we will link all of these. All right, gravity <laughs> drunk, and then cat versus cop. Cat versus cop is where a cops trying to write a ticket, and this kitten just walks up and just <laughs> harasses him nonstop. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I showed it to the guys in the office about three weeks ago. Well, by the way, to answer your earlier question, Jack, I would say like uh, it was like the tail end of New Kids on the Block, and then In Sync right around there as well. Really? Yeah. You want to say like 90s. you want to say like grunge, like Nirvana or anything like that? It wasn't like I mean that was a it was a big movement, but I wouldn't say it was a like teen fervor kind of thing. What about hip hop? Hip hop really hit the. I mean, it came out in the eighties. Yeah, but, but really we're talking about we're 90s. talking about like a thing that you know teenage girls have posters on their wall. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. No, they I just thinking... they just fucking lose it. Yeah. Like when Robert Patton, Robert Pattinson, is that Pattinson, him? Robert Pattinson, when he walks on stage and the girls just lose it. It's just like. That's a, we need that. You know what I mean? Oh, we need we need to have girls that are capable of losing it. So like, going, uh, whatever. That's no. another good one that, that goes in Best Videos of the Year, which is the girls <laughs> doing commentary over the, <laughs> the preview at Comic-Con. Yeah. They're going, oh, my God. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Oh, he took out his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she sees ghosts. All right. Anything else we want to talk about today? Uh, I'm going to review really quickly our nominees for the drunk, first annual Drunk Tank Awards. Sponsored by Penny Arcade. Um, <laughs> best movie of the year. We have Taken, Hurt Locker, Inglorious Bastards, Up, Star Trek, District 9, 500 Days of Summer, and The Hangover. We've got to cut that down. So you want to keep 500 Days of Summer or The Hangover? I don't know. I haven't seen either. Uh, you want to keep District 9 or Star Trek? Star Trek. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm fine with that. I like District 9 a lot. We'll keep Star Trek. Um, that gives a seven there. So we got to eliminate Taken, Hurt Locker, Inglorious Bastards, Up, Star Trek, 500 Days of Summer or The Hangover. I, th- I think 500 Days of Summer or The Hangover have to go from there. Yeah. I'm, I would say 500 Days of Summer. Okay. I love the movie, but... I don't think enough people saw it, so we want people to yeah, vote exactly. on stuff that they can see. Best TV show. We currently have... According to my notes here. 30 Rock. Office. Mad Men. Lost. And Dexter. We got that one down to five. I think we, we cut out one to get it down to five or six. Yeah, we did. We'll look at the audience. I feel like we're yeah, probably... Yeah, we, we cut out South Park. We're probably missing some stuff in there, too. We probably are. We probably are. Like some, there'll some, be some good suggestions. Like Dirty Jobs or Man vs. Food or something like that that I liked a lot. Oh, yeah. No reservations <laughs> with Anthony Bourdain. Okay. Video games. We had Assassin's Creed 2, ODST, Brutal Legend, Batman, Uncharted 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and Modern Warfare 2. A lot we of twos. We a couple a of, sequel, yeah, a lot yeah. of twos. A lot of twos in there. Well, wasn't Brutal Legend the only major title that hit this year? Oh, you know what we didn't put in there that we probably should have? What's that? That probably would go above Brutal Legend is Borderlands. People love yeah. that fucking game. I see more people playing Borderlands than Left 4 Dead 2 right now. Yeah, we need like two categories in that. Yeah. 
Uh, and then for movies, we already did that one. Uh, we did TV shows. Best trailer, we have the Halo Reach trailer, the Star Wars Old Republic, the Tron movie trailer, the Youth and Revolt trailer. And I put in the Taken trailer because I remember the trailers being incredible. I have to go back and the watch Hangover that. trailer is really good. Was it? I remember that. I remember seeing that going like, what the hell is this? You saw. You said the Modern Warfare 2 trailer, right? Modern oh. Warfare 2? Oh, that, that's, that trailer that's, was... That's probably the best video game trailer I've ever seen. That trailer, seen. yeah. Okay. N- not as good as Old Republic, but it that was very, the, very good. It's and, the, the Till I Collapse trailer. Yeah. Called. And we'll link these, and if you're yeah. on the site, you should definitely subscribe to the group, because then sometime we'll put up a vote and have everybody vote for an Audience Choice Award. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, it sounds real fun. Audience look Choice? Look how this shit just comes together. Wow. Yeah. It's like we planned it or something. Man, yes. It's like we're brainstorming for Penny Arcade. 2009 was a fun year, but God, I'm so excited for 2010. So best online video, we got Daichi Beatboxing, Surprise Kitty, Muppet Bohemian Rhapsody, Makes My Taco Pop, World's <laughs> Smartest Criminal, The Gravity Defying Drunk, and Cat vs. Cop. God, you know there's like 300 more that we just can't think it of on the top matter. of our head it right now. It's between World's Smartest Cop and The, the Gravity <laughs> Defying Criminal. I mean, those two. <laughs> World's Smartest Cop and The Gravity <laughs> Defying Criminal. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what those were. That, that sounds like a, like a TV show. You know the gist. Okay. Thank you for listening to The Drunk Tank. Thank you. Uh, we will be posting our nominees for Best Movie, Best TV Show, Best Trailer, and Best Video Game, and Best Online Video in roosterteeth.com slash drunk tank. Drunk with a D, T with a tank. <laughs> Jeff? Uh, that's it for me. Au revoir. <laughs>